If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. There are worksheets at the back if you want to take notes there or if you forgot. Uh, you're welcome to have those. Hebrews 2, and we're going to start reading in verse 10 uh, here in just a second. And tonight I want to talk to you about the humanity of Jesus. The humanity of Jesus. Okay, uh, He was human. Okay, he was 100% God, uh, 100% man. And Hebrews 2 just does a wonderful job explaining that. And the outline tonight, number one, uh, brought many sons to glory. Jesus brought many sons to glory. The second thing is, two, he disarmed the devil, disarmed the devil and delivered us from death. This is what Jesus has done. And number three, enabled himself to be a faithful high priest. He enabled himself to be a faithful high priest. Brought many sons to glory, disarmed the devil, and delivered us from death, and enabled himself to be a faithful high priest. Father, thank you for the night. And God, I thank you for the word. And God, these scriptures are just so encouraging. And God, I thank you for who Jesus is. I thank you for what he has done. I thank you for his life and, Lord, uh, the hum human part, the humanity part of his life. And, Lord, uh, second thing about that is Jesus' humility. Uh, he showed that. And, God, uh, we, I, I truly believe we are most like Jesus when we are humble. Uh, so, God, I pray that you would just speak to us through the word tonight. Thank you for your word. It is yes, it is amen, it is right. And God, we love studying your word. So God, be with this Bible study tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. When you think about what Jesus has done for you, we should all have a heart of gratitude. He left a perfect place called heaven, came to earth as a man, lived 33 years as the perfect son of God, died on a cross for our sins, was resurrected on the third day, and is now in heaven as we speak. God and Jesus also, uh, also has offered us salvation as a free gift. What a God we have. What a Savior we have. Jesus had many great qualities uh, that we as Christians should strive for in our lives. Uh, just some of those are love, peace, joy, gentleness, faithfulness, and mercy and many, many more, including all the fruits of the Spirit. But the one quality many Christians lack is humility. In our world, humility is not high on the list of things we have as Christians. I believe we are most like Jesus when we are humble, and my prayer that we will see how important uh, Jesus being a human is in him being humble in everything that he did. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, for it was fitting for him, and him obviously is Jesus, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Oh, there's <laughs> just this verse alone. I, I kid you not, if I chose to do that, we could spend the next 20 minutes on this verse alone, but I want to hit the highlights here. Uh, it was fitting for him, uh, talking about uh, coming down as a man, for whom all things and by whom all things. And he is talking about creation here. Hold your finger there, there and go with me to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Talking about the humanity of Jesus Christ. John 1. The Bible says in John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and you can plug Jesus' name in there, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. And then look down in verse 14, verse 14, and the Word, Jesus, became flesh, uh, we use the word incarnation. He was in human flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, 
the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we see what he has done, okay? He came down as a man. Uh, he left uh, the perfect place called heaven, and it was all because of Adam and Eve and sin. Uh, somebody had to pay the price for sin, and that is what Jesus has done. Now look in John 17. Flip over to John 17. John 17, verse 22. John 17, 22. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. Jesus is talking, and he, he is praying for all the believers that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be made, made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you has loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may, may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you have loved me before the foundation of the world. And you look at this, and then you read verse 1 again, uh, that second part, in bringing many sons to glory. Folks, I'm telling you, uh, you know, I, and you know, not many people think about this, but Jesus was God's son, all right? And we are Jesus' brothers and sisters in Christ. What Jesus has, because he came down, and it showed his glory. And you think of his glory when he was here. All right, we're talking about miracles, folks. We're talking about walking on water. We're talking about healing blind people. He's talking about healing uh, the lame. He's talking about casting out demons, okay? So Jesus left a perfect place, but yet took on the body of a man, okay? I mean, Mary... Uh, you know, he was placed inside of Mary, and obviously, and I know you know this, you know, J Joseph was not his biological father. He could not have been the perfect son of God if that was the case. But the Holy Spirit uh, was placed inside of Mary. He was born from a virgin, okay? And, and early on in his life, uh, you could see where there was something different about Jesus. And folks, his glory... Uh, man, you think of, of several instances in the Word of God, not just his ascension, uh, but just where when you looked at him, you could see the glory of God. And, and kind of the neat thing about all that is, folks, we can have that same glory, and we will have that same glory, especially uh, when we get our glorified bodies. And I'll speak about that here in just a minute bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Okay, and when you think of captain, uh, you think of somebody that's in charge, you, you're thinking of a great leader, and uh, I, I'm just telling you folks, uh, if he hadn't come, he could not have been the captain of our salvation. All right, we come through Jesus Christ. We are saved through him. He is and, and you think about this. He was the perfect example of Christianity. The perfect example. The captain of our salvation. And was made perfect through sufferings. Why did he suffer? Why did he go to the cross to pay for our sins? So why are we surprised when we go through suffering? Okay? Uh, matter of fact, uh, 2 Timothy 4.12 says, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. In all of Jesus' adult life, he suffered persecution. All of his ministry, those three years of ministry, he suffered persecution. He went to the cross for you and I. And then verse 4 says, for both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. We are children of God, but we are brothers and sisters of Christ. Okay, and, and that's just kind of a neat thing 
uh, that not very many passages and you don't hear said a lot. But let me tell you what else suffering brought to Jesus Christ. It brought humility. Okay, humility. Because folks, he could have done something about that. When they were spitting on him, he could have done something about that. When they were punching him in the face, okay, when they were calling him names, when they were in that court of law and lying about him, but he stayed humble throughout his whole life. Hold your finger there and go to Philippians chapter 2 with me. Philippians 2. I love this scripture here, and you, you'll recognize it. Philippians 2, verse 3. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Okay, that's what humility is. All right? And it says, uh, uh, let's see, in low list of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. One of the things that stick out in my mind when I think of Jesus being humble was the foot washing thing. Folks, that's what servants did. And I mean, towards the end of his ministry, he was an example of what we need to be. We need to be humble. We need to be servants like Jesus was. Let each of you look out, not for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. And folks, I am telling you, when Jesus was on the cross, it wasn't, I mean, to us, it was about him. But he left, when, when you think about it, the shadow of a cross was on him from the time he was born. He was born to die. He was born to die for our sins, but yet he humbled himself. And look at verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Folks, we need to think like Jesus as we live our lives. We need to be humble. Who being in the form of God, did not consider it to be robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. He didn't say, here, you look at me, all right? He wasn't proud. He, he wasn't bragging on himself and what he, he could do, but made himself no reputation, taking on the form of a bond servant, servant and coming in the likeness of man. And, and folks, I'm just telling you, folks, when, when, you, uh, when they plucked his beard out, he felt it. When they slapped his face and punched his face, he felt it. He felt everything. He felt every emotion that a man could feel. He felt and had every temptation. And folks, that alone just blows me away. To live 33 years and not sin. He was around women. He was around money. He was around people. And folks, he chose not to sin. Now verse 8, and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and he became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. So I'm telling you folks, because of his death, he is going to bring us to glory. Because 1 John uh, chapter 3, verse 2 tells us when we die, when we get our glorified bodies, we are going to be just like him. I think of myself even today, and I look at myself in the mirror, and I'm just thinking, you know, I know you're a preacher, but I'm just telling you folks, I'm not, I'm not worthy of that. I'm really not. I still fight things. I still battle with things. Uh, you know, that old nature is still there. Even though we have a new nature, even though I don't have to sin, but to realize when we leave this place, we will see the true glory of God and we will be like Jesus. And I don't know about you, but that excites me. That excites me as a Christian. And then the rest in verse 12 says, I will declare your name to my brethren. And then uh, again, I, I believe Paul wrote the book of Hebrews uh, and, and one of the reasons is right here, three times, he, he quotes Psalm 22, he quotes Psalm 18, and he quotes Isaiah 18 in this section. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praises to you. And folks, I'm telling you, we as Christians, we should reflect the humility of Jesus 
even uh, you know, the humanity of Jesus, even though he was human. Folks, I am telling you, he was perfect. And our goals as Christians, you know, we should want to be like Jesus, but we should also strive for perfection. Now, I'm not going to argue. I, I understand we cannot be perfect while we're here, but we can strive for perfection. Verse 13, and again, I will put my trust in him. Again, here I am and the children whom God has given me. And he's talking about our relationship to God and our relationship to Jesus Christ. Folks, God is our heavenly fathers. We are sons and daughters of God, but we are brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine that? I bet you my dad can beat up your dad. I mean, you remember that when you were a kid? Well, folks, God ain't into beating people up, but I'm telling you, he is the most powerful, sovereign being in the world, and he is our heavenly father. And Jesus came down in the form of man, human man, humanity, but yet he conquered sin. There was victory over sin, and not only was there victory over sin, folks, there was victory over death. He rose again. And because Jesus is alive, we are alive also. So, brought many sons to glory. Number two, disarmed the devil and delivered us from death. Now, this, this gets exciting here. Just put your seatbelt on, okay? Inasmuch then as ch the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that's his humanity, that through death he might destroy him who had the power over death, that is the devil. And when we hear the word destroy, we think inale, okay? No longer here. And folks, we know the devil is still here. I don't know about you, but I swear I wrestle with him every day of my life. Sometimes he's on, in this ear. Sometimes he's in this ear. Sometimes he's in front of me. Sometimes he's behind me, okay? But the devil, all he's saying is because the Holy Spirit is in my life, we can defeat the devil. We can defeat, and, and I understand spiritual warfare. I understand it can be intense. But folks, my Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Jesus defeated the devil at the cross. I mean, he punched him in the eye. He gave him a black eye. The devil thought, man, <laughs> the Romans did it. I influenced the Romans. The Jews did it. I influenced the Jews to kill Jesus. But three days later, he arose. And it says, that is the devil, and here's the, the kicker, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Folks, I am telling you, the biggest fear, every poll, every one that I've ever seen is the fear of death. Okay? Now, again, I don't have a death wish, but I promise you I'm not afraid to die. Why? Jesus has victory over that. To be absent from the body is to be present to the Lord, with the Lord. So he is taking what, and, and I am telling you folks, people do everything they can to try to stay alive. Okay, and I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm simply saying you should not fear death because Jesus has already taken care of that for you. He had victory over death, and we will have victory over death death also. And then in verse 16, for indeed he does not give aid to the angels, but he, <coughs> excuse me, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. And when he talks about the angels, he is talking about the falling angels. All right. We know that the battle, uh, you know, uh, in heaven, we know what Lucifer did. He took one third of the angels with them. But you have to understand you talk about God and Jesus, you talk about uh, the angels, and then you talk about mankind, all right? For instance, and what I'm trying to say is angels aren't saved or not saved. 
okay? Jesus left the perfect environment, again, went through the heavens, you know, not, and he didn't come down as an angel, okay? And again, I understand in the Old Testament, he made the appearances and it was God in car. You know, I mean, Jesus, I understand all that. But he literally came down for mankind. He literally became one of us so that we could be like him. We could be like him, and, and that's, that's good. And, when, and we know when he talks about the seed of Abraham, uh, there's two things there. Obviously, Abraham, uh, the Jews, God's chosen people, Jesus was a Jew. I don't think you have to, I, I think everyone in here knows that. But he didn't die, folks, just for the Jews. He, he died for everyone. And that's, that's the seed also that he is speaking there. And the other seed of Abraham are Christians. Okay, are Christians. And uh, man, to have that assurance of that Jesus did that for us and, and that we are the children of God and, and we are brothers and sisters in Christ is, is just an amazing thing. Uh, look at Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. Just go back a, a little ways. Colossians chapter 2. The Bible says in Colossians 2 verse 13. Colossians 2 13. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh. Okay, we were dead in our sins, folks. We were dead in our sins. He has made us alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. This is what Jesus did on the cross. In verse 14, having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements uh, that was against us and which was contrary to us. The word is paid in full. Jesus paid your debt for you. I don't know about you, but man, it's a good feeling when you are debt free, folks. You are debt free, and I got news for you. The day you, the day you got saved, folks, Jesus paid your debt. All right, because I've heard all kinds of things. Well, I don't have time to go into that. Let's keep going. And He has taken out of the way, and having nailed it to the cross, our sins were nailed to the cross, folks. What was a cross? It was a sign of death. Okay, a sign of death. And everything that we ever would do, every sin that we would ever commit in our life is paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. And not only that, look at verse 15. Having disarmed the principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them. And we talked about what the gospel was. Jesus was seen by more than 500 people Jesus beat death. Matter of fact, folks, I hope when I die, I hope that I am just thinking about Jesus Christ, and I hope I have the biggest smile on our face. For Lori and I both have said, you're not opening in our casket, okay? We don't want to be seen. We just It's just a personal thing. But if you could see us, Man, I'm going to have the biggest smile on my face just knowing that Jesus conquered death for me. Knowing that I am telling you, and again, folks, I can't imagine the first 60 seconds in heaven. Can you just, 60 seconds. I mean, again, I, I don't think we'll be checking things at the door and seeing Peter. I know there's a lot of things that go on, okay? I think, I, I do think my mouth is going, oh my goodness. Because the Bible says, folks, man is not seen. You can't even imagine in your mind what heaven's going to be like. And Jesus did all that. He disarmed. Why do you disarm people? Because they're going to hurt people. The devil loves to hurt people. What did Jesus do? Man, he took his tools. Now, again, I understand he's still alive. I understand he still influences a lot of people, but he does not have power over a Christian. He doesn't, according to the Word of God, and he has delivered us from death. 1 Corinthians 15, remember what it says? We won't go there. What does it say? Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? I got news for you. There is 
victory in Jesus. So we see here that Jesus' resurrection has destroyed death. His resurrection, you know what it did? Set us free. Set us free. And uh, there's nothing like being free, folks. Again, I've never been incarcerated uh, for an extended period of time. I'm kidding. (laughs) But I just can imagine, let's say being in there a year, when you walked outside, it would just like, you know, you're smelling there. Oh, it feels so good. And folks, that's what Jesus did for us. He set us free. And the third thing I want you to see back in our text, he enabled himself to be our faithful high priest. Look at verse 17 and 18. Therefore, in all things, he had uh, to, be, to be made like his brethren, that he might be merciful and a faithful high priest in all things pertaining to God to make a propitiation for our sins and of the people. See, in the Old Testament, that's what happened on the Day of Atonement. For the, for the, you, the, the priest would go into the Holy of Holies. And folks, if that priest went in there and he had sin in his life, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit struck him dead at the, right there at that place. Okay? And they, they, somebody had to go in there and pull him out of there. But remember, the veil of the temple was torn in two. Folks, we don't have to talk to a priest today. We have a high priest, and that high priest is Jesus Christ our Lord. The propitiation is the payment. He made the payment. And you think, and man, you know, I'm reading the Bible through again, and I remember back earlier in the year when Eli and some of those priests, some of those priests' sons were worthless. They were just worthless. They were corrupt. They lied, they cheated, they did all kinds of stuff. And most of them God ended up killing uh, because he was disciplining them. Because, uh, you know, if you're a priest, you know, you're supposed to not be perfect. But I'm just telling you, they were corrupt. Folks, we have the perfect high priest. The perfect. And now, I don't have to go to a booth. I don't have to tell... Uh, you know, a man, my sin, and that the man I usually tell, he'll have sin in his own life. Folks, I go to God, and I go to Jesus. Me and God and Jesus, we, man, we, we have powwows. I don't know about y'all, but we have powwows, all right? He just says, I mean, there are times at night, he just said, what did you do today, Mike? What did you do this time? That's, <laughs> that's what my dad used to say. What have you done this time? I was talking to somebody the other day, and he was talking about a principal, and my principal in elementary was Mr. Stever. And I got to know him kind of on a personal basis. Oh, I know what reminded me of that. I got to go, I, I made an appointment, I met with the mayor this week. And when I first went in there, I felt like I was going into the principal's office. All right? But folks, we don't have to go to the principal's office. We don't have to tell a priest, a man. We go straight to the throne of God. We have access to God 24-7, 365 days of the year. He ain't going to lie on you. He ain't going to gossip about you. He ain't going to tell on you. Okay? He is the perfect high priest, propitiation for our sins. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. Folks, Jesus knows what you're doing. He knows what you're thinking. You're not fooling Jesus. You're not fooling God. He knows when you're lying. He knows your motive. He knows when you say things and you don't mean it and, and, and act and act like you're better than you are. And he still loves us anyway, folks. He is our high priest. He knew what suffering was. I truly believe with all my heart, no man that walked the face of this earth suffered any more than Jesus Christ. And I understand Paul did a lot of suffering. All right, Paul did a lot of suffering, but I'm just telling you, that last week of Jesus' life, I heard one preacher call it hell week because of the way they treated our Lord and our Savior. 
So he knows what you're going through. He has felt that pain in his own life. He has walked down the road that you have walked down. He knows what cancer is. He knows what divorce is. He knows what hate is. He was hated by many, but he's still our perfect high priest, and he's able to aid those who are tempted. You realize God, God and Jesus always gives you a way out. And the only difference between us and Jesus was he said no to temptation, and we think about it, we ponder it, and many times we give in to temptation. Hebrews 4, just turn over one page. Hebrews 4, he enabled himself to be a faithful high priest. Verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest. We're not talking about a good high priest. We're talking about a great high priest who passed through the heavens. What do you mean? He was in heaven, came down, and went back to heaven. Any other man, any other person has done that? No man has. We know that. Man, Jesus did that. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Folks, confession and, and profession, you could use the same word and interchange those. All right, don't doubt your salvation. Understand everything you got when, when, when you got saved. Folks, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, became a part of our lives, a part of us. We are in God's family. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize uh, with our weaknesses, but in all points tempted as we are. He lived 33 years on earth, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. What's God's grace? God's grace and God's mercy. All right. Grace has given us what we don't deserve. His mercy has not given us what we do deserve. His grace and our mercy, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Oh, folks, all I can say is give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. All those broken dreams, those pains, those sorrows, those burdens, give it to Jesus. He felt all the things that you'll ever feel in your whole life. He had victory over those things. And the best part of it all, we are going to the Father's house. And I've been in some pretty impressive houses in my life. But folks, I got news for you. Heaven will outdo them all. You can do the lifestyle of the rich and famous all you want, but I'm telling you, it won't even hold a light to what we are going to see in heaven, a perfect place. How did all that take place? Because Jesus Christ came down as a man, as a man, the, hum the humanity of Jesus, him, here on earth, dying on the cross for our sins gives us eternal life with him forever and ever and ever. Father, thank you. Thank you that we are truly children of God. Thank you that Jesus is our high priest. Thank you that uh, even in some ways Jesus is our big brother. And God, I thank you that we have victory over sin. I thank you that Jesus can feel and understand our pain and our suffering because he went through it himself. And God, I thank you that he helps us overcome temptation. And Lord, we're just, we're just excited about who Jesus is and what he did and what is waiting for us. Folks, I, I've heard it described as dessert, but it's not. The best is yet to come. We're talking about the marriage supper of the Lamb. We are talking about being the in and seeing the glory of God. We're talking about seeing the Shekinah glory of God, the Holy Spirit and Jesus and God himself will be our God. So Lord, we just, we just look and, and 
and think of how exciting it's going to be. Thank you for sending Jesus our way. Thank you that he had victory over sin. And most of all, thank you that he had victory over death. Because he lives, we will live again. So God, I pray that these scriptures tonight would just encourage us in the faith, knowing that you care, knowing that you're there, and knowing that you have defeated the devil. We love you. We praise you. We thank you that we are children of a king. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We thank you for joining us this evening at Rahel Baptist Church, and may God richly bless you.